Ian Andrews. Good to meet you. Good again. to have you Thank with you. us again, sir. Thank you. Um, Ian, we have talked in previous shows on, on different subjects, important subjects, and, and, uh, but now we want to enter into the unknown. <laughs> there is more, Ian. Uh, there's more, and, and, and that's a little bit, uh, why are we talking about that? Because you have already experienced so, so much but what I like about you and when I under, what I understand that you are all about is that you are hungry for more. Even though you have all this great, the greatest track record any, any, some, any preacher could have, <laughs> <laughs> you're still hungry. You're still hungry for more. Let, let us in on what, what's going on on the inside of Ian Andrews. Right. Well, um, Heidi Baker started it mm -hmm. a, a long time ago now. I was privileged to be in the meeting in Toronto at the time Heidi showed up. And uh, to say that, that her life got revolutionized in Toronto is an understatement. Mm -hmm. um, she was blasted, mm -hmm. uh, didn't mm -hmm. know where she was or who she was. And I mean, God totally transformed her. And then one day she had a dream and, and she saw this warehouse in heaven filled with eyeballs. And um, they were all different color eyeballs, I mean, Caucasian eyeballs, black eyeballs, Asian eyeballs, all different shapes and sizes. But it was eyes. And she got the idea that God wanted her to pray for blind eyes. And I don't want to exaggerate her testimony or anything, but I think if I remember correctly, she prayed for over 60 blind people that did not get their sight. Mm -hmm. And, but once God has shown you something, you can't leave it. So I don't know where she was, but in Africa somewhere driving along and she saw a man sort of tapping his way along the street with a white cane. And she jumped out of her truck and went over to him and I prayed for him and he could see. Mm -hmm. But the miracle was that he didn't have eyeballs and now he did. Oh. And so this was the first warehouse in heaven where two eyeballs had slipped through the actual gap between heaven and earth okay. <laughs> and he had a creative miracle. Wow. Mm. And I was doing a conference in Switzerland as part mm. of the International Association of Healing Ministries and a very famous French evangelist who's kind of completely unknown in the English-speaking world but he's like the T.L. Osborne of the French-speaking world. Mm -hmm. um, powerful man of God um, he was drinking a cup of coffee in French-speaking Africa somewhere and a lady said, would you bless my baby? And he knew that if he blessed one in Africa, there'd be a thousand babies in a line mm -hmm. all wanting to be blessed. And so he rushed out of the hotel to get back to his place and this lady came screaming down the high street after him, look at my baby, look at my baby. And so finally he stopped and turned and he saw this black, crinkly-haired African, African baby, uh, a couple of eyes, nose and a mouth and a chin, and looked normal. Mm -hmm. And he tried to get enthusiastic and say, beautiful baby, and all the rest of it. But she said, no, you don't understand. He didn't have eyes. Mm. And there were two eyes looking at him. Yeah. And so um, I began to put two and two together that... that um, when Jesus was baptized in Jordan, three things happened. The heavens opened, the Holy Spirit landed, and God spoke and said, this is my son, who I love. And um, I experienced the last two, but not the first one. And I thought, now we're living under what's called an open heaven. That um, all these warehouses in heaven, if they exist, and I believe they do, we won't need them when we get to heaven hmm. because everybody will be complete. And so why are these warehouses up there unless they're stockpiling body parts that God wants to come down to earth? Mm -hmm. And I was speaking in a Pentecostal church 5,000 miles from my home and I asked the pastor if I could try something a little unusual, wacky was the word I used, mm -hmm. you know, can I try something different? And is there anybody here who needs new eyes? 
And when I said it, I thought, what am I doing? I mean, I'm putting myself out to be absolutely foolish. Mm -hmm. But um, there was one lady that had glaucoma, cataracts, black bars, floaters, couldn't see, couldn't drive, and she needed new eyes. Mm -hmm. And so um, I have to pray for her now. And, and she comes out, I put my hand on her eyes, and I say, uh, Father, I actually said, Jesus, would you send an angel to the warehouse mm -hmm. and get me two eyeballs? And it was just the way that I could work out in my mind that obviously Jesus doesn't want to get off the throne and run every time somebody wants eyeballs. So I, I kind, of, kind of invoked the angels to help. And uh, I didn't feel a thing, not a thing. And I didn't want to take my hand off because this was the moment of truth. And she screamed, I can see, I can see. I don't have black bars, I don't have floaters, I don't mm. have glaucoma, I don't have cataracts. I can see. And that was the first access that I had deliberately. Mm -hmm. The first miracle I ever prayed for, it was God trying to show me there was a warehouse in heaven because a lady got two brand new kidneys that were not diseased, they were totally whole. Yeah. Um, and uh, since then, I've been pursuing it as and led by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And we had a lady that was in a wheelchair, and, I, I, and the only reason she was in the wheelchair was she didn't have a seatbelt on yeah. in her car, and her head hit the windscreen hard. Yeah. And, and she had brain damage. Physically, everything else worked, but she didn't get the signal from the brain. Mm -hmm. And I was training children how to pray for the sick, so I said, look, I said, why don't you gather round, and we're going to ask, uh, we're going to ask Jesus to give her a new brain. If there's hearts in heaven, if there's eyes in heaven, there will be brains in heaven. And all the little children put their hand up and said, ah, would you send an angel, Lord, to the warehouse and get us a brain? Mm -hmm. And there was one child said, I've got what looks like a loaf of bread. <laughs> and I said, that's really great. Now don't drop it. Um, <laughs> put your hand like this and then put your hand on top of the person in the wheelchair. And um, uh, because a brain looks like a loaf of bread. The child didn't know this. And uh, the result was the lady got up and walked. Wow. Because she got a new brain. Mm. And so um, I don't major on this, but no. I can see a parallel that a few years ago everybody had big, big thick television sets. Now they've got flat screens and you can't find a big one mm -hmm. anymore. It's obsolete. And um, if a flat screen TV breaks, they don't get repaired, they get replaced. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if God is showing us something in the natural that he wants to bring in the spirit, where healing is going to possibly be different. Mm -hmm. um, I have a friend who's prayed for somebody who didn't have a thumb, mm -hmm. and that thumb grew again. Mm. Um, with all the wars that are going on around the world, mm. I can quite see that if God was to replace a limb that was blown off in a bomb, it would change that man's life, but it, it, would, it would probably change an area mm. in one go. Yeah. And so I'm grateful for Heidi mm. to mm. open up that concept that mm. maybe there's a warehouse in heaven mm. and, and we can access it. Mm. But I only do it when I feel the Holy Spirit wants me to go in that direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not replacing healing nope. by any means, but I guess there are some situations where it's almost beyond healing, yeah. and actually God wants to give a brand new organ. Mm. Um, I, I had a lady that had cancer, stage four cancer. She was high up in the mountains, and her lung capacity had dropped to like three, it had dropped to about 30%. Mm -hmm. 
but high up in the mountains it had dropped even more. And so she's gasping for breath. And it was a children's instruction camp that I was taking. And a nine-year-old said, um, I see bird's wings mm -hmm. and I don't know what they mean. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I know what they mean. If you put lungs on an x-ray, it looks like two bird's wings. Is there anybody here who needs new lungs? And it was this cancer lady who said, yeah, I do, desperately. And he just prayed that God would put two new lungs in her. He didn't actually pray for the cancer to go or anything. And then she hyperventilated because she went from a, about a 10 to 20% breathing ability to 100%. Mm -hmm. And yeah. all the effort she was putting in with the old lungs kind of hyperventilated the new ones. Mm -hmm. and, and she went back to the doctors in Spokane and they said, um, we don't know what's happened, but something good has happened to you. Yeah. And so um, it is a possibility that God might ask us on occasion mm -hmm. to access that warehouse in heaven. Mm -hmm. And if he does, we've got to be open enough to the fact that it exists mm -hmm. and that he wants to replace an organ rather than heal it. Mm. Probably just to demonstrate he's a creator, always yeah. has been. Well, what I have uh, confidence in is that, that we, it's the Father's will for us to pray as it is in heaven, yeah. let it be in the earth. Mm. And it's, it, there's no sickness in heaven. There is no members missing in heaven. No. There is no curse in heaven. And we, it's like a synchronization. What, what we do here, when we say kingdom come, what, we, what we're doing is we're taking down heaven. It's like one hand yeah. in heaven, yeah. one exactly. hand here. Exactly. Uh, I don't know if there's a warehouse, to be honest with you. No. <laughs> I don't know. No. I hear your testimony. I hear people have yeah. experiences of it. I cannot find it in scripture. But we know that there is no sickness in heaven. And, and this creative, this, this is exciting, this is a little bit of unknown ground that you're talking about. Yeah. But what we do know is there is so many uh, avenues of the grace and the miracle power of God, healing to flow to the body of Christ and to unbelievers as well. Oh, absolutely. To receive, yeah. to open their eyes that Jesus Christ is very much alive. Mm. Uh, and there's so many avenues. And, we, and, and what you're saying, Ian, I hear you say that there is there might be some avenues that we have not discovered yet because it's an ongoing revelation. In every generation, God, sometimes he brings us back to something old that we have mm -hmm. forgotten. Yeah. But it's very much, sometimes he's unfolding something new. Yeah. That is in scripture, of course. Mm. Yeah. So we have this in scripture with open heavens. Yeah. What I, you know, I wanna hear your thoughts on this. What I, what I sometimes think about is that he's saying to Nathaniel, he's saying that you shall see heaven open. Yeah. In John chapter 3, I believe it is, or 2. Uh, you shall see heaven open and angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. And now, I'm, what I'm thinking is that we're in Christ Jesus. Right. And we're, we're having, the, the way is open. The way is open to the, to the throne of grace. Mm -hmm. there's, there's nothing separating us no. from the throne room. There's right. nothing separating us from the, the heavenly places. And, and that stirs my faith. Yeah. That there is an open heaven. But then you're also, but what you're talking about is that there is certain times that we are experiencing the open heavens in a great magnitude. Well, I'm magnitude. just talking from my experience. Yeah. Um, I have a habit of getting overconfident mm -hmm. once I get something flowing. Yeah. A and at that point it stops. Mm -hmm. And so I'm learning to walk humbly with my God and to, and to follow his leading. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's for everybody, no. but, but that's the way I have to operate. Like, yes. um, uh, 
if I feel God wants me to do it, I will do that. Mm -hmm. If I feel God wants me to sort, sort of prophesy to somebody, I will do that. Mm -hmm. If God wants me to shake somebody's hand and read their life history, I will do that. But only when I feel the leading of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, I can't guarantee it's going to happen in every meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Ian, just to change, uh, change gears a little bit, I was in a, in a meeting with you yesterday, mm -hmm. and I heard, and, I, and, I, and I, I realized that word of knowledge is so much more than, uh, there's so many facets to word, words of knowledge, and, and yeah. you're known to get word of knowledge mm -hmm. uh, about people's situations and so forth. And for some persons, they don't move in the revelatory gifts because they might not believe in it or they might you know, have a lack of understanding or right. knowing the will of the Father to manifest that through us. What would you, how would you take somebody step by step in, in uh, first understand that word of knowledge is something very common? And you okay. said that, I know that you said that last night, you probably have tons of word of knowledge, but you don't recognize it yes. as a word of knowledge. Yeah. Um, Walk us through just an initiating well, step for somebody. I think the initiating step is to ask how often and how long do you speak in tongues? Mm -hmm. Most people will say 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and that's basically a lie. It's mm -hmm. probably less <laughs> than that. <laughs> okay. um, when I began, I would have fellowship with a man called Harry Greenwood and mm -hmm. I would say to him, you hear God's voice so clearly, I don't. And he said, stop right there. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. So you start there, mm -hmm. I hear God's voice. So I said, but I don't. And he said, Look, stop there and start believing in God's word rather than your mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. That was a major key. That's good. Yeah. Uh, the second key was, how often do you speak in tongues? So I said, well, probably 15 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. And he said, that's not nearly long enough. Um, you have an hour and a half driving to work and an hour and a half driving home. Speak in tongues all the way. Mm -hmm. And he said, then the wars of your spirit are going to be built up. Mm -hmm. And at some point, God will be able to speak to you clearly and you'll recognize it. Mm -hmm. So. I'm driving to work and I'm speaking in tongues and I have experiences that tell me there's more to tongues than I thought. There's intercessory tongues, there's warfare tongues, there's praise tongues, there's worship tongues. There's all kinds of different mm -hmm. languages that can flow. Mm -hmm. And um, after speaking in tongues for three hours a day, five days a week, for more than a year, then I could hear God's voice. And I could probably hear it before, but I didn't recognize it as such. Mm. Yeah. And so I encourage people that even today in Pentecostal churches, you don't hear much about speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. It's like prophecy, healings, miracles, and that thing. But I think it's the gateway through which everything else flows. Yeah, that's good. And um, I encourage people to, to actually do that. Yeah. And if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, and you're watching this program, ask Jesus to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah that's good. And, and I guess you had your time of trial and errors in, um, in this. I never had an error forward. with the word of knowledge. No, um, no. It's always 100% accurate. My God. Um, yeah. And it results in a 95% healing rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you get mm -hmm. the word of knowledge, because <clears throat> it's basically the father speaking to one of his sons mm -hmm. and saying, this is what I want done now. Mm. And because the father says it, he knows the person is in a place to receive it. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, it's possible to have that divine connection. Yeah. Um, I've had people not acknowledge words of knowledge in a meeting, and it's completely killed the meeting because mm -hmm. it's like, well, is he guessing? Yeah. But they come forward afterwards and say, can you pray for me? And for a long time I said, no, you've missed it. Mm. 
simply because the presence of God had gone. Mm. But um, I prefer to reach into the love mm. of God and still give it to them yeah, today, yeah. but um, if I can. But um, I've never known the word of knowledge be wrong. Yeah. It's not guesswork that I energize. Mm -hmm. It's not an imagination that I energize. Mm -hmm. It's a picture that plays in the back of my mind suddenly mm -hmm. that I'm not expecting. Or it's a feeling in my body that mm -hmm. comes that I didn't have a second or two ago. Mm -hmm. I noticed you said something that I stuck with me from yesterday. You said that, that uh, uh, a word of knowledge is like a flash. Yes. But the spirit of prophecy is like, it's growing on you and it's yeah. prompting you, it gets yeah. stronger and stronger. And that helped me out so much because uh, uh, sometimes you don't know if it's, you know, what you're experiencing, you don't know if it's, uh, if it's back in the days for the person, if it's right now or if it's a future thing. Uh, and that, and, and I, I recognize that, that word of knowledge is, is, is it's not as strong, probably, but it's mm. sometimes it's very much, it's very much uh, a flesh, and when you yield to it, mm. you can get even more. Yeah, information. Um, if you don't believe the first picture, you're not going to get the second. Mm. Um, and except you become like a little child mm -hmm. and play with it, <laughs> the scripture says you can't enter in. Mm. And so, as I get older, I become more childlike. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I also, I also, it's also important something that you stress a lot that word of knowledge is for people to know that God knows their situation. Yeah. And this healing just in the knowing that the eyes of the Father has seen what where I've been. What, and what, what's happening in my life right now. And that brings healing, that is your experience. Yes. Um, it's not the word you're going to be healed that brings the miracle, but it's always, it's... When I started it was, um, if God told me there was somebody there that had multiple sclerosis mm -hmm. and he wanted to heal them, I would give that out as a word of knowledge and proclaim it. Mm if the anointing was strong enough on the meeting to support that. Mm -hmm. If it's not, then they have to come forward for prayer. Mm. But I prefer God's presence to be strong so that I don't have to actually touch them because um, I don't have a lot of residual strength, so mm -hmm. I don't want all my strengths to disappear out of me. Whereas mm -hmm. if, if I get the word of knowledge and I point to them mm -hmm. and they take it, it doesn't come through me. Mm -hmm. And so I can do that for quite a few hours mm -hmm. without feeling tired. Yeah, yeah. If I get a healing line, I'm pretty exhausted by about a third of the way through a long yeah. healing line. Yeah. And that's not healthy for me. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, just the word of knowledge itself, if it comes from God, mm -hmm. it has creative power in it. And if you believe that and you speak it out, then they should get healed where they're sitting. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people think it's one word of knowledge for one person. Mm -hmm. But actually, when God said, let there be light, it was like mm. a word from God. But he didn't say over Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Scandinavia and everywhere. Mm. Um, it just was for everybody. Yeah. And the word of knowledge is the same. That's good. So you can have 20 people healed mm -hmm. if they've all got that condition in the same meeting. Yeah. But they don't realize this unless they're told. Yeah. I wish we had all day to talk about this. Time is running out again, Ian. For you that has been watching us, uh, you can just Google Ian Andrews and you will find out that there is so many YouTube clips and there are so many videos available. And don't miss out the coming episodes where we're going to continue uh, listening to Ian. And also there are some other episodes backwards that you can take, take part of, which has been amazing.